Now that last guy said that things would have to change for it to become popular in America. I think one of the things that would really make it more popular is it, it didn't last five days sometimes. Yeah, five days is a little bit too long, especially in the United States. And, and it, can you believe it? There's two to three billion people in the world who are all about this sport. That's, That's amazing. half the planet. I know, and we don't even know how to play it. I, I don't. I don't know how to play, but now I, now I do. A little now, bit. Now I do. I can now make I a do. little relation to baseball. That's about as far as I go with my knowledge. Pretty much, pretty much. Well, joining us right now is Rob Laybourne, who is the president of Arlington Sports. Thanks a lot for joining us. Yep, Rob? Glad, pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, recently in May, the Air Force Cycling Classic just finished up. Tell us what that was about. Well, it's a, uh, the region's premier professional and amateur bike races. Um, it started out uh, really in 1998 right here in Clarendon as the Clarendon Cup. And over the years, it's grown. Uh, we added a second day um, this year. We had two days of racing last year, and we brought them together on the same weekend. It was really, it benefited the pro teams coming into town. They only had to come once um, to race two days as opposed to coming in twice. So why do you think uh, biking in this area is so popular? especially for big races like that. I mean, professional people are coming to Clarendon to, to well, race. Well, I mean, we, we have a venue for these pros to come and race, and it's a great course. It's always been in the schedule in which uh, um, it's leading up to what used to be the uh, U.S. Pro Championships, and so it was a great opportunity for the teams to come in. They would bring their best riders, and it really kind of created a, uh, a reputation of being one of the toughest uh, races in America um, because all the pro teams were coming. They were all bringing their A riders, and they were all in top form. And the course is a challenge. It's a short one kilometer course here in Clarendon around the metro with a couple of uh, technical turns that really you know, challenge the riders. That reputation kind of you know, built over the years and uh, um, adding the second day, which is a road race, a circuit race uh, around uh, Crystal City and the, and the Air Force Memorial kind of added, uh, you know, everything um, came together. And I think over the years, you've got that. People are coming out and seeing bike racing. And whenever you have racing like that that's exciting and interesting for the general public, I think it sparks a lot of interest on the people to come and say, hey, maybe I can try that someday. In fact, we have quite a few people that their first experience with bike races was coming to this event, and they became racers and now are pros. And I would imagine part of the success is due to it's also there's also a kids race and a ladies race and some other races for multiple ages? Yeah, the whole day, um, it, it, it begins with a couple of amateur races for um, more of a seasoned amateur, not beginning amateurs, uh, and then we have a women's uh, pro race. And then we also uh, have reached out to the community, um, all the all children in the, in the region, uh, in the country actually, are invited, nine, nine and under free of charge to race in this kids race, and it's become one of the largest kids races in America. And so we offer this to all the Arlington County schools. My my kids who are actually here in the studio today have been <laughs> racing in it since the first year I had it and they could race in it. So. All right, speaking of kids or rookies, how do you suggest a beginner cyclist get involved and start the actual hobby of cycling? There's, I mean, the easiest thing is just to get a bike and go out and ride. And, uh, and once you get the bike, that's the biggest challenge. I think the next step is to go back to the bike shop where you purchased it and talk to the, the folks that work there and get in a sense of maybe some local group rides in the area that you can join. Um, there's always, of course, the, the trails that we have in Arlington. We have, what, just dozens and dozens of miles of, of paved trails, which are nice to ride on, but if you want to start to really push your ability and, and race, these are triathlons or, or bike races, you need to get in group rides, training group rides. Um, and just, you know, there's so many guys that look like they're pros. They're probably <laughs> from a local amateur team. Just stop them and, and, you know, ask them where they ride and what kind of group rides they participate in, and they'll help you out. They'd be more than happy to. So if they dress like Lance Armstrong, maybe throw a stick in their spike, stop them, <laughs> and ask where to go from there? Yeah, you never, you know, actually Lance has been, ri has been known to ride in this area, so maybe really? I wouldn't, yeah, uh, pick wow, him. Really? So, yeah, I would... Uh, <laughs> You know, but but certainly any you know pick up any guy that you see um, or don't pick up any guy you see, but <laughs> any any uh, anyone you see on a bike that again looks uh, like they ride. Uh, okay. You know some of the the key things to look for again is sort of a matching jersey short combination uh, with some local sponsors. If they have shaved legs, that's a good indication that they race. Mm -hmm. um, so that's and they have an expensive bike. That's another good indication. Yeah, there must be a difference in bikes that the pros and the amateurs use, mm -hmm. and like the bike I have in my garage, which is something I would buy when I was 15, something like that. What's the difference in level of bikes? I'm sure it's multiple speeds and 
gets harder and more difficult, more expensive, I'm sure, too. Yeah, the bikes, you know, you can get a real good startup bike for $800 to $1,000, you know, and that's going to have a decent frame. It's going to have all the gears you're looking for, you know, whether it's a 12-speed or an 18-speed, which are pretty standard now, 18-speed. Uh, um, and uh, from there, you go up on its really weight and the kind of, uh, you know, models and, you uh, um, manufacturers you want. You know, Campanola um, makes kind of the top of the line. You've got the Durace, you've got the Shimano, you've got, you know, different um, uh, models within the, each of those brands. So and that's going to dictate the price of your bike. So there's a shop here I'd recommend right here in Arlington. The Revolution Cycles is, you know, a bike that I, a shop that I've been going to for over 10 years. I think they're one of the best in the region and they've got a great selection of all the bikes to plug for them, but uh, they're also right <laughs> down the street here from your studio. I'm sure the people who work there could probably help people who Absolutely. are just getting started, yeah, you know, yeah. where they're, to go. They're to very, to. very knowledgeable, yeah. not only just on the, the, the technology and the bike itself, but also some of the local places where to go. All right. I think yeah. that's it. Thanks that's a lot great. for coming right. in. That was awesome. Thanks really for having me. Revolution Bikes, fantastic. if you have any questions. And what's up next, Dom? Uh, up next, uh, we alluded to last week the uh, spelling bee that you and I both participated in. We yeah. didn't win, but... We didn't win. No, we didn't quite win, but to find out how we did, you're going to have to watch this. I know, it's in correlation to the actual ESPN, uh, what is it called, the Scrimmer's Spelling Bee or whatever. The Scripps National Spelling Bee. Yes, that's it. And the, the, the winner of the Spelling Bee is a name I can't even spell. Yeah, that was pretty tough. But uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Just check out how we did with other athlete names.